to see volunteers come through their home crowd to their home floor, where they've won 24 straights. They're atop the SEC and ranked 7th in the country. And tonight, they host their arch rivals from Nashville, the Commodores of Vanderbilt, ranked number 14, both in the top 20 for the first time in 40 years. It is our Thursday night showcase, presented by Zero Price, and what a showcase it should be. We come to Knoxville, Tennessee, and our matchup, the Vanderbilt Commodores, ranked number 14 in the country, against the seventh-ranked Volunteers of Tennessee. And welcome to Thompson Bowling Arena, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler with Jimmy Dykes. Jimmy and I are finishing off our tour of Dixie. <laughs> Three straight nights. This should be one of the best, maybe the best game in the SEC this season, at least to this point, Jimmy. Ton of offense. Yeah. These two clubs lead the SEC in putting points on the board. And think about this. Vanderbilt trying to bounce back from their loss to Kentucky. And Tennessee, they have a top ten swagger about them just watching them warm up. What's at stake for Tennessee? They, they have their eyes set on a possible number one seed come March. Well, it's such a big game. We have a double star watch for you, if that tells you anything. As you take a look, first of our star watch for the Commodores of Vanderbilt. They've got an inside-outside punch we're going to be looking at tonight. Well, the big Aussie on the left and Shane Foster on the right, and you look at Shane Foster at 6'6", 51% from the three-point line. A.J. Ogilvy, the big Aussie from down under, hoping to do, do damage over the top of Tennessee tonight at 6'11". Two guys that are hard to guard from Vanderbilt, and for Tennessee, just pick any two of the three Smiths that will be on the floor. Jawan Smith right now leads Tennessee in scoring. Terrific as far as triggering the press and the pressure for Tennessee's defense, and Tyler Smith has been the ultimate blender on this team, Brad. He leads the team in rebounding, steals, and assists. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. First for Kevin Stallings, Commodores of Vanderbilt, as they come in from Nashville tonight. 16-1, and 1-1 one one in conference play. Beal, Foster, and Gordon in the backcourt. And up front, Neltner and the guy Jimmy just talked about, A.J. Ogilvy. And for the home team, Bruce Pearl's Volunteers of Tennessee. Here's how it looks. Smith, Howe, and Chris Lofton, the preseason All-American in the backcourt. Up front, Tyler Smith and Wayne Chisholm. Bruce Pearl's done a marvelous job in his three years here in Knoxville, restoring basketball to prominence here. It's not a football town anymore. It's football, basketball, baseball, you name it, 60 and 20 in three years. And Kevin Stallings, his ninth year as the head man, the Commodores of Vanderbilt, coming off a tie for second in the East a year ago. Third member of our crew tonight, Andy Katz, courtside. Andy? Thanks, Brad. I'll tell you, it's a renaissance in basketball in the state of Tennessee, and it started last March when you had two of these three teams come up with a whisker of the Elite Eight. Memphis got to the Elite Eight down to the final possession for Tennessee against Ohio State and Vanderbilt against Georgetown. It continued into the offseason. All three schools have sold all their season tickets, and this March, all three could make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. Brad? All right, Andy, Ted Valentine, Mike Nance, and Pat Adams are officials. There's Shane Foster, first team. All SEC choice. You saw Chris Lofton. Top two teams in scoring. Top two three-point shooting teams in the conference. If you don't like points, go get a beer somewhere. Otherwise, sit back and enjoy with us. <laughs> Last year on this floor in this game, Tennessee delivered a knockout blow early. Vanderbilt has to withstand it tonight the first ten minutes. On the drive. Smith. Now Howell on top, guarded by Foster, as Tennessee run a, runs a weave at the top of the circle. They run a lot of weave, they run some spread flex action. I think Tennessee will probably do a lot of stuff off the bounce against Vanderbilt. Chris Lofton trying to penetrate, lost the handle, four on the shot clock, everybody hits the deck. And possession arrow is going to go to the Commodores of Vanderbilt. So Tennessee doesn't get a shot on their opening possession. Key for Vanderbilt in this ball game against Bruce Pearl's club. Can Vanderbilt be the most physical team on the floor? Much like Georgia Tech had to do last night against North Carolina, that's what Vanderbilt will try to do tonight against Tennessee. Here's Beal at the points and tipped away out of bounds. Beal the top assist man for the Commodores, 6'3 sophomore. And he runs the show. Vanderbilt has to get into their offense. Once they do, their offense is hard to guard, but you have to get into it against Tennessee, who averaged 25 points a game off of turnovers. Alex Gordon is Shane Foster touching it for the first time. Ten on the shot clock. 
Beal looking for a pick. Four on the shot clock. Vandy might not get a shot off either. Finally, Beal does. And kept alive by Neltner. And now the long three. Rims out. Foster's all alone underneath. Vanderbilt, that's the start that they want to have, doing something around that rim area, trying to establish themselves as a more physical club. That time, showed up on the offensive glass. Tennessee takes the outside jumper with Chisholm. And Gordon brings it in a hurry. Pull-up jumper by Beal. Three rims out. Tennessee with the rebound, Jawan Smith. We'll try to keep all the Smiths clear for you tonight. It's not going to be easy. Sometimes there'll be three on the court at the same time. That was one to the other, and he missed the layup. You see Ogilvy with the rebound was not much of a factor in Leperina in their loss. Offensive foul on Beal. Vanderbilt had to fight from 16 back just to get that game with Kentucky to overtime and then lost it by six. Well, Beal is the kid that's, that's much better going to his right than to his left. And the scouting report tells you when he does go right, sometimes he will over-penetrate. You get your dog set, you can draw a charge, and Tennessee does. Two minutes into the game, Tennessee is yet to get a decent shot. Credit Vandy's defense for part of that. Neither team wants to have to play zone because both clubs shoot the three-point shot so well. Tyler Smith trying to get it down on a low block, and we've got another possession arrow. This one will go Tennessee's way. You know Bruce Pearl would have loved to have jumped out to one of those 10-0 leads and let this building explode. That's what they did last year. First three or four minutes are crucial as far as the mindset for the kids in black. I thought they were going to reset the shot clock, but they did not. And finally, Tennessee on a follow with Wayne Chisholm ties it at two. Can Ogilvy get established early? The big Aussie number four. He hasn't touched it until now. There it is. Can he do something with it on the touch? He gives it up. He's a great passer. And Neltner, the recipient on an easy basket. The offense needs to go through the hands of, of Ogilvy. Maybe not as your primary scorer, but he can flat out pass that basketball, much like Andrew Bogut, the other Australian great to play the college game the last few years. European players are so great at when they're that tall, it's kind of scouring the floor for a teammate. He overview that basketball, and, and you don't take away his shoulder, and the help rotated over late. If you're going to come and monster Ogilvy, you have to leave while the ball is in flight. If you come to monster him when he already has his paws on it, too late. He will rip you up as a passer. Tyler Smith faces up against Nelton. Now the turnaround jumper off the glass. Good-looking shot. Didn't fall for him. Bandy comes down with a 4-2 lead. Out of pressure. They lock you up on the ball and they pressure off the ball. Foster fadeaway three-pointer rebounded by Tyler Smith. It's locked and not on the floor right now for Tennessee. Not a great shot by J.P. Prince. And the rebound comes off to Vanderbilt. I know it's early, but the strength plays, the loose balls, so far, Vanderbilt's been the guys that have come up with them. Yep. Almost four minutes into the game, and this is low scoring for these two teams. I think the nerves a little bit are having something to do with it. There's a block shot by Chisholm. And a lob underneath the Prince. Tough catch. And he walks with it. Tennessee having all kinds of trouble offensively in the first four minutes. We'll have a message from down under, speaking of the Aussies, when we come back to Knoxville in a minute. And he's one of the top scoring Australian players in college basketball, as you take a look at some of the others. Tennessee knows who he is, and that's uh, for sure. A lot of those guys are coming through that Australian Institute of Sports right now, and a lot of bigs on that screen. Patty Mills, the outstanding guard at St. Mary's, terrific player. Check in with Andy. Well, there's two other names that aren't on the list, Aaron Baines from Washington State and Aaron Bruce from Baylor. But the key thing is, a lot of coaches are going down to Australia because these players are eligible right away. They don't play with pros at the AIS, and they don't have grade issues, so they're not sitting out like some of the Germans and French going on right now nationally. And the final note is, the class of 09 is what the coaches are telling me, has a lot of D1 talent. 
Well, we'll wait for that. That's good news. Australian Open, by the way, continues on ESPN2 tonight at 9 o'clock. And we got a whistle and a foul underneath. It's going to be on Williams. Brian's first foul. Brad, watching Tennessee on film this year, talking to coaches that have played Tennessee nose-to-nose. I think right now they play harder at all five positions than anyone else in the college game for 40 minutes. Wow, everybody forgot about Neltner for the second time in the ball game, and he's got four. Vanderbilt, again, if they can get into their offense, they have some terrific stuff. A lot of slips, a little trickery involved. So important for Tennessee, those first couple of passes to try to keep Vanderbilt out of their set. First loft in long three. Wind out, rebound, Tyler Smith down low. Trying to get rid of it, finds a man, and it's Prince who scores inside. J.P. Prince on the board for the first time. Prince, one of the top point guards coming out of high school basketball as a high school senior, and he has driving instincts, attack the rim instincts, not the three-point shooter that the other perimeter players are for Tennessee. Now Chris Lofton is guarding Shane Foster. This could be interesting. Foster around a pick, switch off there. And nice overplay by Ramar Smith to knock it out of bounds. Ryan Childress checks in for Tennessee for the first time. And Brad, you watch Vanderbilt's man-to-man -man defense. They, they pressure the basketball really hard, but they sag off on the other four positions. You watch the team in white defensively. They pressure the basketball, and they also pressure the other four players. A little difference in how they play their man-to-man. That calf and McClellan also checking in for Vanderbilt for the first time. Because how Tennessee plays, Vanderbilt will have some backdoor cuts. Whoa, Gordon took that one from Neyland Stadium. Kept alive on the long rebound. Here's a turn off the glass by Metcalf. Kept alive again. McClellan underneath. And Brad is very similar to Georgia Tech last night against North Carolina early. Vanderbilt doing a lot of damage in the power part of the floor in this ballgame. Trying to establish we're the most physical team. Ryan Williams would just slip down. He's going to take the jumper on the baseline. And the big fella, a lot smaller than he used to be, knocks down the jumper. Try over 100 pounds lighter, yeah. huh? Since his senior year in high school. Foster had it stripped by Lofton. Nice defense by Chris Lofton out of bounds. What I don't like about Lofton guarding Foster, he gives up about five inches, and Foster can shoot some in his grill. <laughs> so McClellan to inbound. 13.45 to go in the first half. Much more low scoring than we anticipated. I think both teams a little bit tight. Ranked in the top 20. Each of them for the first time in 40 years. They know how important this game is. Foster missed on the baseline. Wanted a foul call on Lofton and didn't get it. Long three by Prince. He's not afraid to shoot, is he? No, but that, that's not his game. That's not his number one and two choice. Foster again being guarded by a smaller guy. Can get his shot off. McClellan gave it up and had it stolen away by Prince. And right now, Prince is trying to do too much by himself. Another turnover. Week of impact continues on Saturday on ESPN. Double header action. Starting at noon, Villanova takes on Syracuse at 2 o'clock. Our coverage moves to the Big Ten. It's Illinois and Purdue. All presented by Altel Wireless on ESPN Saturday afternoon. Full yeah, court pressure now from Tennessee. Brad, if you haven't seen Syracuse's Dante Green play, a freshman, you can talk about love and mayo and Bayless, Gordon, all those guys. This kid now is a terrific talent. One of the tougher guys to defend in that conference right now is a true freshman. McClellan, trying to look inside, brings it out to Gordon. Keegan Bell in the lineup for the first half for Vanderbilt. Metcalf trying to throw his shoulder in there. He's thinking hook shot, and instead it ends up being turnover. All the way, and going to the free throw line, Tennessee will be Ramar Smith. Tennessee, Brad, so aggressive defensively on all five positions. So what does Vanderbilt have to do against Bruce Pearl's defense tonight? When they go set a screen tonight, you tell your kids, you set a screen hard and you hold it for an extra half a count. If not, these guys in white will rip and run to the other end. 
hold those screens, an extra count tonight if you're Vanderbilt to get your teammates open. Lamar Smith with his first points. Ogilvy checks back in for Vanderbilt, as does Chisholm for Tennessee. And Tennessee a chance to tie it up for the second time tonight. Ramon Smith, a 61% free throw shooter, averaging nine points a game. All SEC freshman team a year ago. Tie ball game. Eight apiece. Here's a trap on Bell. He got rid of it, though, down to Gordon. To Ogilvy, nice ball movement back to Ogilvy for the lay-in. Well, that's the way you break the press right there. They barely had to dribble. Got to get back on defense, though. Chisholm ties it at 10. There's the problem. This is the club that will run it right up your backside, Tennessee. As soon as you score, you better be in sprint mode within the first two steps. What a follow on a miss by Andre Walker. Vanderbilt has established himself now as a stronger team around the rim early in this game. Not a good shot by Yvonne Smith, but they get it right back on the turnover. Chris Lawson's had one shot in the opening almost eight and a half minutes. Gives it back to Childress. Childress, odd shot from the elbow. Boy, Tennessee shot selection. I'm sorry. It's terrible right now. No, it's not. And Vanderbilt's defense is outstanding. Something that Kevin Stallings was not pleased with his club with two weeks ago. They've gone to work on the defensive end. Bell for three. Rebound's going to be a foul over the back on Ogilvy, and that will be his second. Vandy on the road, leading the Volunteers of Tennessee by a deuce. Vitale on tape, obviously. Mm. Richard will be back with us in early February. Richie, we hope you're feeling better. 12-10 right now, our Thursday night showcase presented by T. Rowe Price. Great job breaking the press by Vandy a minute ago, Jimmy. And Tennessee has to be successful in their press. Watch what happens here initially, though. Catch that basketball, now hold it. Look, this is too much space right here. You've got to clamp down and not allow vision up the sidelines. So that's the first mistake by Tennessee. They don't clamp down. They allow vision. Now hold it right here. Once you get to this spot, a great job of utilizing your bounces, Brad, and one bounce of the basketball is going to go to the middle of the floor, and now watch what Vanderbilt does. You're going to have one bounce, boom, there it is, pass it, hammer it at the rim. The strength of Tennessee's press is in the front, is in the back court. If you break it, you've got numbers, and Vanderbilt almost, it works to their benefit because a guy like Ogilvy can catch and finish at the rim. That was amazing. They went about 85 feet yes. with one dribble. So far, Bruce Pearl's got to be wiping his brow. I think the shot selection by Tennessee's been horrendous so far. They're 4 of 13. Chisholm's got two field goals. He's got the only two shots I thought were worth anything so far. And as you break the game down in segments, just like Coach Stallings and Coach Pearl will do, Vanderbilt, they withstood the opening blow that they didn't withstand last year. Huge confidence boost to the kids in black. And now they go to the free throw line. Jawan Swift got hammered underneath. Brad, I like the foul, though. Metcalf has five fouls to give. I mean, the haircut tells you he looks like a guy that would foul. And all you're trying to do right there if you're Vanderbilt, send the message again. We're going to be the most physical club for 40 minutes. Looks like a guy from the WWE, if you ask me. Boom, right there. Just make sure <laughs> that there's not an easy two points. He'll be at WrestleMania coming up in late March. <laughs> Jawan Smith at the free throw line. <laughs> Smith, an 85% free throw shooter, and misses his opener. I guarantee you, Metcalf has had pickled okra in his life. <laughs> he looks I'm like going to get you some pickled okra now, I'm and not. he looks like a guy that would know what pickled okra is all about. Why don't you go home tomorrow and bring me some next Tuesday? Next Tuesday, okay. erupt. All right. We'll be in Kentucky to see Tennessee again. Here's the backcourt pressure. Beal, they trap him. Time is of the essence right now. And they just... Across the timeline. Good job of beating it with a pass. Tennessee could not get their face-to-face -face pressure set. And another Vanderbilt turnover. They're sixth. Vanderbilt cannot expect a lot of the contact to be called on this home floor. You have to play through it. Tennessee is never led. 
Lofton trying to go up. He's looking for a foul and knocked out of bounds. Chris has got one shot from about 23 feet away on top of the circle. And here Bell gets all over the basketball. Great call and great defensive play. Tennessee leads now. Tyler Smith, a muscle basket underneath. 13-12, Volunteers. They have, Danny's done a really nice job also of keeping 21,000 people out of the game. That's exactly what you have to do, and they've handled the press so far. Now, Tennessee has three or four different versions of it, and Bruce Pearl will read how Vanderbilt's attacking it and make the adjustment. Now, oh, here's another bad pass. All the way in and score it. Boy, what a job by Jawan Smith. He took that one coast to coast. You can't throw habit passes, floaters, or high school hairy passes against Tennessee in the half court. That's an automatic two, and it also gets the crowd in. Metcalf way short on a turnaround jumper, and now whistle and a foul as Neltner is going to go to the free throw line. Yeah, we all went to high school with a guy named Harry in gym class who would put the ball above his head and just kind of throw one of those, I'm not sure who I'm throwing it to, and that's exactly what happened. You cannot do that against Tennessee. You have to meet the pa pass. You've got to get in triple threat position and get that pressure off of you as a passer. <laughs> I love your Harry high school passes. We all had one of those. Almost as bad as the bad shots that have been taken. <laughs> For you, they're horse shots. That's right, I said horse shots. <laughs> Vanderbilt goes to its bench. Gordon <laughs> and McClellan come back in. And Bell and the big guy, Metcalf, sit down. Tennessee, third in the country at forcing turnovers over a 20 a game. That is the fuel to their fire. And you have to keep that fire to a flicker if you're Vanderbilt, and it's not easy to do on their home floor. Now they got the free throw. 15-13, Tennessee in front. Past the midway point of the first half. Tyler Smith trying to back in and now work into the lane. Tough shot. Tyler Smith. Need some help. You got to have some help. Pressure defense by Smith all over Jermaine Beal. You know what that backcourt pressure does a lot of times? It makes you play too fast in the half court where a lot of those turnovers have come from in this ball game. Foster has not had many good looks. Way... <clears throat> what a shot on the baseline, huh? Turnaround jumper. Brad, he is a shot maker, and he's so good at understanding when a smaller defender is on him, his eyes get really big, and that's exactly what happened on that play. Pretty shot. Cuts the lead to two. Eight and a half to go in the first half. Lofton will try to answer. Rebound. Battle for it. Out of bounds to Tennessee. Andy? Well, I'll tell you, Shane Foster got a lot of confidence by making that Pan Am team over the summer, a team that Chris Lofton was not able to make. And Kevin Stallings has a great shot to actually have, for the first time ever at Vanderbilt, back-to-back -back SEC Players of the Year, from Derek Byers to Foster, which would really be unheard of. He had another one back with uh, Matt Friese finishing in second, and Dan Lane, he actually won the award. So Stallings could have three SEC Players of the Year in his tenure. Brad? 116th game for Shane Foster. That's a lot of basketball. Nice drive by J.P. Prince as he crossed the lane. Makes it a four-point lead again. Kevin Stallings is, a, is an ace as a recruiter. You know what? Actually, this summer, he didn't go out on the recruiting trail near as much. He wanted to spend time with his son that's a senior in high school this year named David, who's going to, uh, named Jacob, who's going to play for uh, North Carolina in baseball. And just, you know what? My family time is valuable to me. Called all the recruits, explained it to them. The coach, we understand and we appreciate it. That's part of being a basketball family. Yes, it is. Being part of your own family. Five on a shot clock. Long ball by Foster. Rebound will come off to Jawan Smith. Pull up jumper by Howell. Hey, he's got a three. First three of the ball game for the two best shooting three point teams in the conference. And a push from behind. I think it's going to be on Brian Williams. It is. That'll be Brian's second. Jordan Howell in transition with a pull-up jumper is given the Volunteers its biggest lead of the night.
Basketball is presented by T. Rowe Price, providing investment management excellence for over 70 years. Invest with confidence. And in part by GMC. We are professional grade. 7-19, Romana gets Thompson Bowling Arena in the first half. Tennessee leads Vanderbilt by seven as Jimmy takes us inside the play. Brad Jordan Howe does a great job right here of running to the speed of the point guard who has the basketball over here. Now, why is that as important as they hit up the floor? If he gets out, Howe, and just really sprints, he's going to get there too early because this is a kid that wants to shoot the basketball in rhythm after one bounce. If he runs too fast, he's going to be there to catch it. And as a stationary shooter, he's a senior kid that runs to the speed of the point guard to get himself in rhythm. Tennessee on a 9-3 run. They can make it 11-3 with a lot and the feet underneath to Tyler Smith. Vanderbilt's eighth turnover became a slam dunk on the other end, but Shane Foster's got an answer. Foster, that same spot. He hit the three-pointer a moment ago. That one just inside the line, 24-17. And even when you go to a bigger defender on Foster, he's 6'6", and he actually fades away a little bit and can still get it off. Tennessee will go to its bench. Prince comes out. One out of six for Tennessee. 0 for six for Vanderbilt, the two best three-point shooting teams in the Southeastern Conference. They each average over nine a game. Tennessee averages over 27 three-point shots a game. And we got an offensive foul. Not often. Chris may be getting a little frustrated trying to get free. So far, he has not scored. And no Vanderbilt is not afraid to run. But right now, with this building the way it is, they better slow the game down and try to get something around that rim. And if they cannot turn it over, Tennessee's defense, man, just with Ogilvy and Meltner and those guys, when they hold the ball, Tennessee's been able to come up with steals. Chisholm for three. Hey, Chisholm on the outside. He is such a weapon because of that right there. He will stick one a game on you as the five man. Really stretch your defense, and now Vanderbilt's in a world of hurt. On the road down 10, and the turnovers are starting to be a major problem. 14-3, to three, Tennessee run. Vandy needs some offense to quiet things down here. Vandy needs to get strong with that basketball. There's strength, but it's ripped away. It's going to be a foul called. Uh, well, there wasn't. I thought I heard a whistle, and I was expecting a foul on Chisholm. Now everybody's trying to call a timeout, including me. They're not giving me one. Well, there was a whistle. It may have been an inadvertent whistle, but there was a whistle. Unless it came from the crowd, I don't think it did. Ted Valentine goes to both coaches. And right now, we're not quite sure. It's going to be Tennessee ball. A little bit of a mystery. It was an inadvertent whistle. Tennessee ball. So you call it, Jimmy. That's what it was. Volunteers get it back. Up by 10 with 5.44 to go. They're saying Tennessee had possession when the inadvertent whistle came, and that's why it's Tennessee's ball. Chisholm will try. Heat check. And he airmailed it to Beal on the backside. Again, he's good for about one a game. <laughs> he gets hungrier than that, and it can work against Tennessee. That last one was his 11th of the season. He wanted to try it again just for good measure. Well, it's just pressure everywhere right now, denying the pass. Beal goes up in the tall timber. After the shot, a foul. College basketball on Saturday on ABC, Maryland and North Carolina. North Carolina survived Georgia Tech last night. And at 6 o'clock on ESPN, Clemson and Duke will get together. That one was decided last year at the buzzer. A week of impact continues on Saturday. Now we got a whistle, and we're going to have a foul for somebody grabbing somebody's jersey underneath, I believe. Juwan Smith picks up that cheap foul. The most difficult team to inbound the ball is Tennessee. They do a great job of scouting and take away your looks.
Vanderbilt on the short end by 10. Foster in traffic is fouled. And now we got a lot of whistles going on. Jamar Smith picks up that one. With five minutes remaining in the half. Vander I'm sorry, Vanderbilt doesn't play with, with a jet. I'm talking about their point guards or guys that play that position, Gordon, Beal, and Bell. They don't have that extra gear. And if you don't have that extra gear against Tennessee's pressure, it can get real difficult to get clean looks. And that's what's starting to play into this game also for Vanderbilt. Shane Foster, the number one scorer in the Southeastern Conference, has seven right now. 1,677 for his Vanderbilt career. Got him, got one of two. Back to single digits. Tennessee by nine, and we're under five minutes and a half. Chisholm drives around. Foster is strong off the glass. Missed in close. Childers keeps it alive. 50-50 traffic rebound that Childers rips out of the crowd. Those are the plays that Vanderbilt was getting the first five minutes. This Lofton still held scoreless here in the first half. Childers to three. Got it. Only his third of the year, but he was wide open. Everyone that Bruce Pearl puts on the floor has the green light to shoot open threes. Foster will try to answer with a triple of his own, and Chisholm rips down the rebound. Critical four minutes for Vanderbilt. Trying to hang in this game before the half. Well, it's Chisholm's trail. <laughs> That's his second of the night in three tries. Everybody up with 3.55 to go in the half. It is all Tennessee right now. They lead Vanderbilt by 15. This ESPN telecast available in high definition on ESPN HD presented by Olivia. 3.55 remaining in the first half in Tennessee has opened a gaping hole of 15-point advantage. And Brad, you had a great call, Chisholm Trail, because Tennessee, they a lot of times they will trail with their big, but again, they all have the green light. There's the immediate push of the basketball, but Chisholm is trailing the play. He only makes one a game, actually less than one a game, but because Bruce Pearl gives them all the green light, they have the confidence to let it fly when they are open looks. Somewhere, John Wayne is watching. On the drive. Jordan misses, and Tennessee with a rebound. Boy, this is a dangerous time right now for the Commodores. Tennessee keeps scoring. They're going to go to the locker room down in a huge hole, and it's going to be hard to dig their way out of it. They do come up with a Tennessee turnover. However, they'll have the ball with 3.32 remaining when we come back. Now, to Brad and Jimmy. All right, Carl, our week of impact continues right after we're done. As a matter of fact, in the Big Ten, Tubby Smith in Minnesota hosting Indiana. When we're done, Tobacco Road, the side of North Carolina and Duke, both being home this weekend on Saturday. Kansas State and Texas A&M, that'll be a good one. Kansas and Missouri, Kansas undefeated. And Kentucky and Florida, the primetime game on Saturday night on ESPN. When Duke has put together, I think, 21 wins in a row for Clemson in ACC play, so that's a tall mountain for... Clemson to come into Duke the way they're playing right now. You look at Vanderbilt scoring tonight, 18 on the board, and they average 86. Tennessee's defense has been terrific at all five positions. They really overplay and pressure all five positions. Vanderbilt right now does not have a counter to Tennessee's pressure in the half court. Jimmy, I'll tell you, part of the game, I talked to Kevin Stallings, and he was just hoping that they could be down to the last couple of possessions similar to Ole Miss, and then the hope was that they could out-execute Tennessee in those final possessions. Well, I'll see if that occurs, Jimmy and Brad. Yeah, we'll see also, Andy, if they can do what they did against Kentucky. Remember, they were in a 16-point hole mm -hmm. against the Cats, and they forced overtime. So this one's a long ways from over as Gordon hits both free throws and cuts it to 15. Remember, Vanderbilt also makes nine three-point shots a game. They have not made one in this ball game. They can come back on you with a flurry. Childress tried one for Tennessee. Loose ball underneath, out of bounds, Commodores. 
And that if Vanderbilt can somehow keep Tennessee from going into locker room up 15, 16, or 17 and get it down to 10 or 9 without, without making those threes, you know Kevin Stallings will tell his kids, hey, we're still in this thing, unlike last year at the half. Now a nice drive off the glass Big. and one. Chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. I agree with you. I think if they get the single digits going to the locker room, they would be a happy bunch of Commodores. Well, they went back to the power part of the floor like they were the first four or five minutes. Able to establish their bigs around the rim. They did it on the offensive glass, and now they do it with a big attacking in Ross Neltner. I think that's what you have to do on the, in a road game. You have to have the ability, Brad, to throw that ball to that low block guy and him score, go to the free throw strike, silence the crowd, and that's exactly what Vanderbilt did on this possession. Neltner, Mr. Basketball of the state of Kentucky. As a senior, five years ago, missed the free throw and missed the opportunity for a three-point play. But it is down to 11. Jawan Smith got his defender to run by, try to three, and the rebound is all Vanderbilt. Foster's alone over here on the left wing if they look to him. They didn't find him, but Bell's wide open too. Strong rebound. Rejected out of there by Prince. Now Foster, and they're getting looks. Tennessee ball. They got three cracks at it there and couldn't score. They're 0 for 8 outside the arc. And as we talked about, they average 9.3 makes a game. And they have had eight or more three-pointers 13 times this year. So if they go to locker room at halftime without a three, they're going to be wondering where their shooting eye is. Well, and, and put it in even more perspective, you're talking about playing against, I think, the best one-loss team in the country on their home floor. Jordan Howe fires from long range for the second time tonight. He's got six on two three-pointers. Brad, Tennessee's strength of schedule backs up that they are the best one-loss team in the country. And the ball last touched by Vanderbilt. We saw the best unbeaten team last night according to strength of schedule North Carolina the most unproven unbeaten right now according to strength of schedule is Kansas and look at this right here Tennessee strength of schedule 11 the most proven one loss team as opposed to Indiana a little bit of a surprise with a schedule strength of 258 a 14 point lead with less than two minutes to go in the half for Tennessee just when Vandy was scratching back in Howell hit that long three pointer and he's got it right now, and he needs some help, and he walked with it. A well, bad decision by Howe to back up with that back dribble when Vanderbilt climbed on top of his jersey and then picked up the basketball. Howe will come up to meet Keegan Bell with a minute 33 remaining in the half. Too tight a defense by J.P. Prince. I give him credit. He was right in his trunks. A little too much hand checking, though. But that is Tennessee defense. They're not going to waver from how they play. Bruce Pearl knows you come into our building, we're going to press you, and then we're going to start pressing you some more. And when you get to halftime and you come back out, we're going to press you some more. They will not go away from how they believe how they play. Right now. The referees are not impressing this crowd at Thompson Bowling Arena with the last call. You well, know, Brad, though, on January the 17th, every coach in the country should know this about your club. What do we do best? For Tennessee, I think it's the pressure. How good are you at what you do best? For Tennessee, one of the top five teams in the country for 40 minutes pressuring you. They have played that way throughout. Now to the last 120 here in this half. Be surprised how many teams right now can't answer those two questions I just had. Smith, Smith, Chisholm tried to tip it in, and it's out of bounds to Tennessee. A new shot clock. Ogilvy averaging 19 points a ball game. He has two tonight. Chris Lofton is a preseason All-American. He has zero. What's the out of bounds guy now stepping in? You cannot flinch against Tennessee, because if you flinch, the lead can go from 13 to 16 to 15 right before the half. Prince gives it up, Lofton for three. Rimmed out, 
Lofton with a rebound. Well, those are the, those are the shots last year was automatic from Chris Lofton. There's about a 17 second difference, game clock and shot clock. Your shot maker is Foster, but they gotta get him a touch. He's being hugged up all over the floor right now by multiple defenders. Good defense by Tennessee again, eight on the shot clock. A lot of dribbling by Beal. Five, four. Mountner, he's going to get a shot away. With one second, Vanderbilt has the ball out of bounds. And Brad Foster never got a paw on the basketball. They are hugging him up, face guarding, almost like third grade defense. Well, they've got a lob play from the sideline. Here it comes. Foster can catch him fire. He's got to get him open. I don't think they got it away, did they? Nope. Shot clock violation. Too long a pass and too long a shot, and it took too long, obviously. And that's the 12th Vanderbilt turnover of the first half. Tennessee, they force 21 turnovers a game, and they get 25 points off those 21 turnovers. So they're on pace right now, or at least they're ahead of the pace with 17 seconds left in the half. Tennessee is the only time you'll ever see them walk that ball up the floor <laughs> and, and right. be non-aggressive. Non they want to take the last shot knowing at worst, you're going to go in up 13 if you're wearing a white jersey. Chisholm trying to make it. Don't do it. Bill Bell comes out of there. Now has it tipped away by Prince. Nobody gets a shot. Well, Shane Foster, seven points in the first half. Ogilvy only two. Vanderbilt really struggling. 23 points at the break is all. And Tennessee goes to the locker room with a 13-point halftime lead. 36-23, volunteers out in front time for the UPS Halftime Report with Franny. Thursday night showcase presented by T. Rowe Price from Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville, Tennessee. And it's all volunteers right now, the seventh ranked team in the country with a 13 point lead over the Commodores of Vanderbilt. Welcome back to Knoxville, everybody. Brad Nessler and Jimmy Dykes. Andy Castle join us in a minute. Right now, not only are the stars not shining, they're not even aligned for Vanderbilt right now. No, they're not at all. But you know what? If you can feel good about being down 13, Vanderbilt is in position to do that. They have more turnovers than made field goals, and this is a club getting 27 points a game from the three-point stripe. Right now, they have zero. So Kevin Stallings in the locker room, you know he said, guys, I don't think we can play any worse. Right. We're only down 13. Let's try to hang in here. You're taking, a, you're trying to take on a team potentially as the number one seed on their home floor. Right. Well, he's got 12 turnovers. There's only nine field goals, and there's some of the story on our stat sheet. Chain Foster, seven points. Chisholm's got ten, but you can see the second lowest output of the season for the Commodores with only 23 points at the break. Let's check in with Andy. Well, Vanderbilt assistant Tom Richardson told me they had no inside presence. A.J. Ogilvy has to be a player here in the second half. They were also starting their offense way too far out. As for Tennessee, Bruce Pearl just told me, look, they can beat us by threes. They, with threes, they can't beat us by twos. And Wayne Chisholm, he said, did a great job on Ogilvy. Brad and Jimmy? All right, Andy. Keep us posted from behind. The benches were underway in the second half. So everybody's got that three ball on their mind. Both coaches, Andy, Jimmy, and I all agree. And again, because Vanderbilt, I don't think, has a really a true point guard. They have guys that, that just make the position okay. That's why they're running their offense so far out on the floor. There's Ogilvy trying the hook shot, so they did get it inside. Ogilvy's got four rebounds and only two points, and he's averaging 19.4 a game. Chisholm feeds inside, now it's Lofton for three. Somebody, I think, got a hand on that one. Chris got his own rebound. Back-to-back -back threes don't go by Tennessee, so they'll try the inside route. And that one does go by Tyler Smith. Running the other way is Foster. That time Tennessee didn't get back in transition very well. You cannot let Vanderbilt throw it ahead to Foster in transition. He's too big, too physical going to the rack. Gordon comes up with a loose ball. Chisholm defending Ogilvy. Look where Ogilvy's getting touches. He's catching it 12 feet from the rim instead of six. That's a big difference. And now Chisholm with a foul. 
Yeah, there's no low block there. There's barely a block, right? Yeah. Think about Ogilvy. He grew up playing basketball in Australia. So his first time to play in a big-time arena was last weekend in Rupp, 23,000, <laughs> and he didn't make the adjustment very well. I thought coming into tonight he would be a little bit more accustomed to a big stage, big arena atmosphere, but so far still not in his comfort zone at all. Averaging over 19 points and over 7 rebounds. Some of the other guys that have had great starts as freshmen for Vanderbilt, as you see there, got the second of two. 12-point game in a much more low-scoring affair than we'd anticipated. Smith on the outside, misses a three. And Foster with a rebound. Tennessee will shoot enough quick shots to allow Vanderbilt to get back in this ball game. Foster, that's a lot better position to catch the basketball if you're over there. And he's going to go back to the free throw line. See the difference in the catch, yeah. Brad? That time, instead of at 12 feet, Ogilvy got his big keister down there and on that low block and sat down on the knees of the defender and went to work. Watch what he does right here. You see that keister right there? Just right there. That, that right there is where the battle is won. Because Ogilvy is at where his power position is. Camp out on that low block area. He can do some damage in the second half. Folks in Australia who are watching us, Jimmy's circling keisters. <laughs> you can look that up in your Australia dictionary. <laughs> they're, Ogilvy. they're too concerned about <laughs> tennis right yeah, now. I, I worry about Mike. Yeah, they're still wondering who Ogilvy is. At least that's what they told us in the first half. 38-27, two minutes into the second half. Tennessee loves to have those guards up high on the floor. That's by design. It's not because of the Vanderbilt pressure. There's Jawan Smith leaning in on Foster looking for a pick from Chisholm, and he gets it back to Chisholm. On the pick and roll, big guy can't score inside, got it back. This time he does with a left hand. The guy they call Wheezy, he's got a dozen. And now Ogilvy drives on him and draws his third foul. And a fire may have been lit under the big Aussie at halftime because he has come out the first three minutes of the second half and taking command of this basketball game on the offensive end for Vanderbilt. And he's gotten Chisholm in some foul trouble in two minutes and 24 seconds. And Brad, that is a big question mark for Tennessee with Duke Cruz out because of the heart condition. Not sure when he'll return. They cannot afford to have Chisholm in foul trouble. Three-point play for Chisholm. And that's a 10-point game. It's a 10-point game, and Vanderbilt still has not made a three. They're averaging nine a game. Tennessee has a big concern right now. They know it. Powell for three. Boy, it was wide open. He thought it was going down, too. Here's a chance to make it a single-digit game for the Commodores this trip. I'd go right back to Ogilvy. He's being defended by a guy that has foul problems. Get him a touch. There it is. Down low. Hook shot. Doesn't go. Chisholm did a pretty good job defensively without picking up another foul. Lofton had it partially blocked. Commodores come out two on one against Howell. Beal runs with him and he's fouled by Howell. Vanderbilt has done just what Andy Katz talked about at halftime. They've been aggressive and they are getting some two-point stuff done in this ball game. Triggered by Ogilvy and this time it's triggered in transition. If they get this part of their game going, Brad, then those three-point shots will open up. Attack in transition, establish Ogilvy around the rim, then those three-point opportunities will come for Vanderbilt over the last 10 minutes of this ball game. Got a good free-throw shooter up there, too, although he's only one out of two tonight. He's the number two free-throw shooter in the conference. 85% for Jermaine Beal. Tennessee already 14 fouls, none for Vanderbilt here in the opening three minutes and change. And that Chisholm has to sit down. We knew that was coming. Brian Williams checks in for him. Chris Lofton also down with no points, coming off a five-point game in the win over South Carolina and an 0 for tonight so far. Now, Williams is on the floor instead of Chisholm. He's not the offensive guy of Chisholm, and we're going to see if he can defend Ogilvy. Quick whistle on the possession. It's going to be on Jermaine Beal. That's his second. And the first team foul of the half for Vanderbilt. 
Tyler Smith the inbound. Not a very good pass, and Shane Foster forced the turnover. They can cut it down to six if they score. Neltner, strong to the hole, rejects it out of there. He gets it back, and then he throws it away. It gets blocked, and Tennessee ends up with it. But I looked over at Kevin Stallings, and he was applauding his kids. Yep. They are doing exactly what he wants to start this second half. I saw that very thing. When the yep. coach is applauding you. Got three. Good look by Tyler Smith to get it down low. Wow. To Jawan Smith. Tyler Smith does so many things as a right-handed and a left-handed passer. And this is a high-profile guy that transferred in to a high-profile team. And I was anxious to watch how that mix would develop. And you talk about a guy that has blended beautifully with a basketball team as a high-profile transfer to a high-profile team. It has been a great formula. Tennessee and Tyler Smith, obviously, is at the NCAA he showed a lot of compassion with his father battling uh, cancer. He soon after passed away that the NCAA allowed him to transfer without having to sit out a year with the coaching change at Iowa from Steve Offer going to New Mexico and Todd Licklider going from Butler to Iowa. But Bruce Pearl telling me before the game that he looks at Tyler almost like a point forward, that he is almost like their point guard. Brad? We like to hear when the NCAA does something nice. <laughs> they did in that case. Here's the play on the way for Jawan Smith. Lead goes right back to 13, and now Bell's in trouble in the backcourt. Randy, all kinds of problems. Foster. Going to be a foul, I think, on Tyler Smith. Boy, and why would you foul right there if you're Tyler Smith? They almost had a 10-second call. They sure did. Smith does pick up the foul. Pace is picking up a little bit, too. 15-48 remaining in the ballgame. Tennessee maintains a 13-point lead. basket of the game. Connecticut is up by 138-37 in the ESPN Plus game. Marquette and Louisville, it's a 34-26 advantage, and West Virginia by one. Good game from the Big East right now. All right, Carl, speaking of which, presented by Altel Wireless, Villanova and Syracuse get together. Coming up on Saturday at noon, then we'll follow that with a Big Ten, Illinois and Purdue. Presented by Altel Wireless on ESPN Saturday afternoon. Brad Nessler, Jimmy Dykes, Andy Katz in Knoxville at Thompson Bowling Arena. Over 21,000 on hand watching the volunteers who have pretty much led the entire game. And Vanderbilt has struggled dramatically on offense tonight compared to what we've seen earlier in the season. I think they need to spread and space off of Ogilvy and let him go to work. Whistle and out of bounds. Vanderbilt has had a lot of turnover problems tonight. And Tennessee has turned those turnovers into 19 points. As we said earlier, they get about 25 points a game off opponents' turnovers. Jawan Smith missed the three. Vandy still hasn't hit a three. They've hit a three in 680 straight games. It goes back to, like, 1986. They haven't hit one yet tonight. I think since the rule was implemented, yeah, it was. they've made one in every game. So you know the time's coming for Vanderbilt to stroke one on you. So obviously they're not living up to those numbers so far tonight. Neither team for that matter, although Tennessee has hit some threes. And Vandy 0 for 9. Foster is the most likely guy to get Vanderbilt going with a three. Uh-oh. And a foul on Neltner. No, Brad. So I had three different people at your hometown Atlanta airport today as I walked down the terminal. Hey, who's the best team in the country? <laughs> you know, I, I was honest with him. I said, you know what? I would be guessing just like you would right now because it, it seems to me every year we go through a flavor of the month. You know, you look back in November, Duke won Maui, and we were all on top of Duke, and Georgetown was undefeated at the time. In December, Texas with a huge win over UCLA. We were all hot on Texas. In January, it seems to be Kansas and North Carolina. In February, it might be Tennessee, the way they're playing tonight. Chris Lofton finally scores. We will find out on April the 7th in San yeah. Antonio <laughs> who the best team is. That's what I tell That's them. the beauty of college basketball. It will be played out on the floor. Oh, uh, Bandy turns it over and Tennessee runs. Prince all the way. Had it stripped by Foster, but he's fouled. So Chris Lofton finally gets off 
the goose egg with his 44th three-pointer of the season from the baseline right here. Those that, are the, Brad, those are the same shots he took all of last year. Now, he's been covered up a lot so far this season as a preseason All-American, not only with his man, but a half defender. So he's taken some tough shots. What does that equate to, though, for Tennessee? It equates to guys like Juwan Smith and Tyler Smith and Chisholm and Prince becoming double-figure scores as well. If he gets back on his role, Tennessee is a real threat to be a number one seed or a number two seed. That's how good this club can be. I talked to Chris on the floor when he was warming up before the ball game. And I said, hey, you usually shine when we're here for either a Tuesday or Thursday ESPN game. He looked at me and smiled and said, all I care about is we're winning. And, and so he, that's, that's great. Him. That sums him up. Prince just gutted a couple of free throws up there. And it's out of bounds to Vanderbilt. Tennessee, 24-game home court winning streak. Their best start in seven years. They haven't opened up in SEC play 3-0 in seven years either. They're 2-0 and, oh and climbing right now with a 16-point lead. Remember, Vanderbilt was down double figures in rough and came back to take it two overtime. They're down 16 at the ball and came back and won. They have enough offense to do it. Bell trying to ring it up from three, locked it with a rebound. And since Chisholm went out, Williams has held his spot. Ogilvy's out of the game right now, but Williams has held his position at that five spot for Tennessee. This is a lot different looking lineup right now as Lamar Smith goes in and gets his first field goal of the night. Tennessee by 18. Biggest lead of the night. There's a good look inside. Nice pass by Bell and Metcalf scoring for the first time on the night. They have enough slips and different reads, a little trickery to get three or four easy buckets a game, Vanderbilt does. It's Childress, Ramar Smith, Williams, Prince, and Lofton on the floor. Here's Lofton on the drive. Chris Lofton inside. He's the best scoring threat on the floor, and he's got five now in the last minute or so. Here's Foster, long range. I don't think anybody Ramar Smith finally comes up and takes it. Vanderbilt's in a world of hurt right now. They're on the verge of this thing getting to 20 and the building exploding. There's a follow by Prince on the miss by Lofton. Up to 20. Bell goes all the way. Had it blocked against the backboard, but Metcalf cleans it up. Lofton thought about a three. And now he brings it back out on top. Brad, they're the kind of club that plays the same whether they're up 20 or down 10. It does not affect Tennessee's personality. They are who they are, and you can't get them out of what they want to do. Very difficult to do it anyways. They use a little bit of clock here with 12-12 remaining in the ball game, And Foster is going to get called for a cheap foul, his second of the half. And he's going to sit down. So the two preseason first-team choices, Chris Lofton and Shane Foster, both have struggled tonight, though Lofton's come to life here in the last couple minutes. Big game this weekend on the non-BCS level, Illinois State at Drake in the Missouri Valley Conference, the two surprises. And uh, Tim Jankovic, former assistant at Vanderbilt, leads Illinois State. Chisholm back in there. He's been big tonight. Wayne Chisholm's got 14. I talked about how hard Tennessee plays for 40 minutes at all five spots. And it's showing up in this ball game. George Drake hits one from the baseline. His first basket. And they came back on the road against Xavier. Tom Miller huddled his club up the next day in practice and said, you thought you played hard? You found a team in Tennessee yesterday that played harder than you did. For three. That's more of what we've seen the last couple of years from Lofton. Blocking foul on Tennessee, but the crowd into it big time now. Man, I think three, maybe four teams in the country right now are capable of coming on this floor and beating Tennessee. Tonight, Vanderbilt's not one of them.
2012. There were reports he was going to check out after 2009, but he stays through 2012. Sports Center with all those stories following the DJ White Eric Gordon Indiana team taking on Tubby Smith's Golden Gophers. That comes up after the conclusion of our game. Oh, be wary, you Hoosiers of the Big Barn in Minneapolis. Here at Thompson Bowling Arena, welcome back. This isn't what we expected, I don't think. Vanderbilt's not playing that well. Tennessee's rolling right now. Well, they are. You look at this Tennessee ball club right now in the national picture. This is the nucleus of a team last year that was so close. And he talked about it. They get to that Elite Eight. This is a club that plays a unique style. And they have a lot of ingredients that goes into that magic formula come March. They've got speed. They can really score. They have depth, especially if Duke Cruz gets back. And you're looking at one of the elite teams in college basketball tonight on their home floor. Remember, they lost just by one to Ohio State in the regional semis last year, 85-84. Bruce Pearl, the mad scientist over there with a the mad jacket. I love the suspenders under the jacket. He hasn't taken the jacket off tonight, but they're the same color as the blazer. Bruce, in three years, has really put the thrill into Tennessee basketball, as Coach Summit has done on the women's side, you used to come in here for a men's game and you could sit wherever you wanted to, right? That's not the case anymore. Yep. Plus, with a reconfigured Thompson Bowling Arena, it's beautiful in here. They have given up some seats for all the great skyboxes they have on the far side that they didn't used to have. Place looks awesome. And Brad, every team right now, it doesn't matter if it's UCLA, Kansas, Memphis, whoever, they, they all have questions. Last night, North Carolina, we know their question mark is depth behind Ty Lawson and overall depth. The question mark for Tennessee is depth around the rim because after Chisholm and Williams without Cruz healthy, if he doesn't come back, Tennessee could have some foul problems in March that could really bother him in a power game. That's what Ohio State did to him last year. Jimmy mentioned earlier in mid-December, Duke Cruz they realized he had a heart condition, so he's done for the year. Prince underneath, he was a 6'7 sophomore who much like Chisholm could really rebound underneath and played tough on defense. Whistle. And one official defers to the other. It's going to be J.P. Prince, I think, with a foul. Great news for Tennessee. Duke Cruz may be back in the lineup any day now, according to Bruce Pearl. They took him down to Atlanta and to Cleveland, and Bruce Pearl tells me he thinks it will be determined that he has an athletic heart, and that that means that Cruz can be cleared, ready to play, hasn't played since early December. Now, as for his condition, he hasn't done anything for months, no exercise whatsoever. But Pearl said he'll start him out strong, maybe 10 minutes a game, but he expects him to be a contributor here soon. Guys, that'd be a good news, wouldn't it? You know, that'd be huge, because what Duke Cruz can give you come March is 10, 15 minutes of ball game. He's a rebounding phenom. He can defend that five position, and he can, he and Chisholm now, they can hold their own with anyone on the college level right now around that rim. Chisholm can't do it by himself, but the combination of he and Cruz and Williams can. That's and Perry. that's it for Perry on Jawan Smith. Tried to give it a little look away, and then called the ball, 13th turnover suffered by Tennessee. He tried to do the Chris Paul, take uh, it in and bring yeah. it back out. He's not Chris he's Paul. He's not Chris Paul. He's very good, <laughs> but he's not Chris Paul. <laughs> you are not Jack Kennedy, Senator. <laughs> you are not Chris Paul, Jawan. Yes, anyway. Here's a three, and oh. that's a big shot by Jermaine Beal, his first field goal. Very timely. Still a 14-point lead, though, Tennessee. In Tennessee, their guards high out on the floor. They stretch you out. That's by design. That's not Vanderbilt's pressure doing it to them. That's what Tennessee wants to do with their offense. That was 15 on the shot clock after Beal knocked it away from Howell, who picks up his dribble. Backdoor cut. An extra pass to Smith. And he's going to the free throw line. Jawan Smith got it to Tyler Smith. At one point tonight, we had... Tyler Smith, Jawan Smith, and Ramar Smith on the floor at the same time. We got more Smiths in the S page of the phone book out here for Tennessee tonight. 
try to keep them straight. It's not that easy. Number one, number two, and number 12. And this is number one at the free throw line. And he has been something special after the transfer we talked about from Iowa. Leads Tennessee in rebounding, steals, and assists. And you're talking about a club now that averages over 20 assists a ball game. They have a lot of playmakers. Even their bigs can make the next pass to the guy that makes the pass. Very difficult to defend Tennessee for 40 minutes. Tyler Smith now with 10 points and 8 rebounds. This little Chris Lofton is going to be called for the foul. Chris, one of those guys that can do no wrong in this building. He gets cheered on every shot, whether it goes in or not. Yep. If a foul's called on him, they blew, blew the officials. And part of that's because he's a senior who chose to come back. Preseason All-American. He misses a shot, they boo the ball. <laughs> that was not Chris Lofton's fault. <laughs> when he's talking to Ted Valentine, it kind of gives him a pat on the backside as if saying, yeah, well, okay, that's the call we made. Brad, if I'm Kevin Stallings and my staff over there, they may not be able to come back and win this ball game tonight, but you're, talking, you're looking at a Vanderbilt club that was so close to getting to the Elite Eight last year, and they were burned in this building big time. So if he can close out this game and get it to a 10-point game, they will mark on their calendar, you have to come to our place, which you and I will be doing in right. February. And Vanderbilt, they will have that thing packed out, ready to return the favor. What a pass, but a missed shot underneath. We talked about the one-point loss by Tennessee to Ohio State. It was only a one-point loss by Vandy to Georgetown. That's a different-looking shot. Look at this. McClellan from the outside. Down to 11. Tennessee a little bit like Memphis in the fact that when they get into a ball game that starts tightening up on them with six or seven to go, do they have the ability to grind it out on you? I talked to John Calipari in October. That was one of the question marks about his team. Bruce Pearl, because of the style that these two teams play, can they grind out a win? They did it earlier this year against West Virginia. A very good win for Tennessee and a grinded out affair. They may have to close it out tonight in that same fashion. Tennessee's only loss to Texas. We've mentioned Vanderbilt's loss was to Kentucky in double overtime. And now at the eight-minute mark, it's down to an 11-point game. Jermaine Beal has picked up his fourth foul, and it sends Tyler Smith to the free throw line. Ten points for the sophomore out of Pulaski, Tennessee. And missed the free throw. The door is open just a little bit. And if your husband walked out of the room, you better holler at him to get back in here. <laughs> Foster, McClellan thought about another long ball. Now gets it to Foster. He'll take it. And got it! Shot maker. An old-fashioned shot maker is Shane Foster. Down to eight. Tennessee wants to talk about it right now, and Vandy's going to hustle to their bench because they're right back in the game. 61 to 53, 738. There's still hope for the Commodores as we check in with Carl Ravage. Carl. Hi, Brad. Thank you very much. Take a look at some scores going on. Big East style. Marquette and Louisville over on ESPN2 getting a little closer. Marquette trying to come back as the ranked team is losing. Connecticut mounting a little comeback at home against Providence under 10 to play at the XL Center. And West Virginia and St. John's now separated by eight points with less than 10 to go. Eric Gordon's first seven games, he scored over 20. He leads the Big Ten in scoring. You'll see Indiana, Minnesota after our game. This is available in high definition on ESPN HD, presented by Olivia. 61-53 now. Tennessee still in front, but a 15-2 Vandy run. Check in with Andy Katz with some big news, Andy. That's right, some big news in the SEC. Multiple sources have told me that South Carolina head coach Dave Odom will have a news conference on Friday and announce that he will retire effective at the end of the season. He's supposed to meet with his players either later tonight or tomorrow. This has been coming for about a week, so it predates their win last night at Arkansas. So once again, sources have told me that SEC's Dave Odom of South Carolina will announce on Friday that he will retire at the end of the season. Guys? Wow, thanks, wow. Andy. That is huge. One news. of our buddies right there now. Yeah. Long time mm. friend of uh, both the ACC and the SEC. And uh, that's some big, big news from Andy Katz here in Knoxville tonight. Vandy comes up with a turnover. As 
Jimmy said, if you thought the game was over, you're wrong. Foster, three. That would have been huge. Rebound comes off to Tennessee. And a foul on the baseline. 7-17 remaining in the ball game. Tennessee now hanging on. Still leading by eight. Station three, starting at 399. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by T. Rowe Price, providing investment management excellence for over 70 years. Invest with confidence. And in part by Acura. Acura Advance. Louisville playing right now over on ESPN2. And one of the things that Rick Pitino's team is doing, playing great defense, allowing just 33% field goal percentage against them. Sosa's layup makes it a 12-point lead. All right, Carl, here it's down to 8, 61-53. And Bandy shooting much better in the second half. They are at 53% in the second half. And they've already got 30 points this half after 23 in the first 20 minutes. They're going to be relying on that guy, I'm sure. Shane Foster, the leading scorer in the conference. So Tennessee has let it slip a little bit here, Jimmy. Tennessee will come back to their pressure, I think, defensively. They've been a little too soft. I don't know about that shot. But Tennessee keeps it alive. I talked about Tennessee and their personality, Brad. They, they play the same if they're up 18 or if they're up 8. They just have a great confidence on the offensive end. The first good look, they're going to go. Drake's going to get a cheap foul. Trying to come up with a loose ball. You can see how much better Vanderbilt has been this half. And Tennessee has cooled a bit. Tyler Smith going back to the free throw line. He's been Mr. Consistency tonight. Ten points. Nine rebounds. And I expect Tennessee, after made free throw, that they can't do it. So now they can't get their press on. That's a huge miss. You miss a couple of points, and you also miss the opportunity to throw your press at Vanderbilt. A bucket here. You talk about a 22,000 getting real nervous. Here it comes. In and out. And they keep it alive. He'll get another chance at it. Foster again. Airballed it to Chisholm. That's the, you know what, that's the guy you want taking the shots. He's no doubt. 51%. A veteran kid. Number four in the country at that 51% from outside the arc. Tennessee hasn't had a field goal in about five minutes. See, they're, they're in a funny part of the game, Tennessee is. Up eight, six minutes to go. Do, do we keep going fast? That's why we always want to play, but can we grind one out on you? It's an awkward spot right now for Tennessee. Two on the shot clock. Nothing but a prayer there and a shot clock violation to Boots. Boots Pearl's team really struggling from the floor. Don't forget, Saturday on ABC, North Carolina top-ranked team pushed to the limit last night by Georgia Tech. Can Maryland do the same? And at six, Clemson and Duke get together. That one went all the way to the buzzer last year. That's at six o'clock on ESPN. Vanderbilt down 16 at DePaul, they come back and win. Down 17 or 18 at Rupp, they come back and take it to double, or double overtime. Now they just gave it up to Tyler Smith for the slam. Costly turnover. Huge. And now their press is set up again. And they have to take a timeout. Might have been a four-point swing that might mean the ball game right there. You never know. Well, the guard play of Kevin Stallings let him down right there, Brad, because you had a non-ball handler out at the top of the key trying to handle it against pressure. That's not a, a, a turnover, in my opinion, for Ross Neltner. It's a turnover by the guards that were on the floor, didn't come and just take the ball out of his hands at that point and get into the offense. And if I'm not mistaken, that field goal off that turnover puts Tennessee right on their average, which is about 25 points a game off the miscues of the other team. They are relentless with it. They're going to come at you all the time with 40 minutes. Sometimes it's in the full court, sometimes it's in the half court, but they climb right up into your jersey, and the minute you flinch and you get a non-ball handler in that position, they rip and run to the other end. There's a big turnover for Tennessee to get this building right. back alive. And remember, Coach Stallings told Jimmy and Andy that if we could keep it close in the last four minutes, be in single digits, be in the ballgame, then we've got a shot. 
Well, that basket could have been a four-point swing. Who knows? Had they gotten a basket on that one, they'd be right in the thick of it. There's still only 10 down. But as Jimmy said, now the crowd's into it, and here comes the full-court pressure again. He's to the basketball is strong to his right hand. Tennessee tried to force him up the left sidelines, but Field did a good job of coming back to his strength. Ogilvy tried a hook shot, had it blocked by Chisholm. Yep. And we get a technical on top of everything else. Mm. He got the ball exactly where he wanted to, Kevin Stallings, to Ogilvy. Ogilvy wasn't real, real strong on the turn. The contact was there. It wasn't enough in the official's eyes. Go back and look at it. That's exactly what you want to try to come back. A lot of ball initially. Maybe came down on the elbow. Looked pretty clean. Yeah, the replay. That replay. <laughs> Chris Lofton not having a Chris Lofton type night. An 85% career free throw shooter, and he missed one. But he puts the lead back to 11. You know what? I'll tell you this, that bench decorum rule, they're still on top of it in January. Yes, they are. I, I like it. I thought it might go away, and we've seen it the last couple of weeks, you and I. Officials staying right on top of what they've been told. Nice lob inside. Tipped in by Chisholm. Chisholm has played big tonight, hasn't he? And you know what? That was an effort play. And I, I hang on the fact that I think Tennessee, over a 40-minute game, night in and night out, possession to possession, they're playing harder than any team in the country. Vanderbilt, timeout. Under five minutes to go, and Tennessee's back in front by 13. Great courage by Vanderbilt to fight their way back in front of an orange-clad volunteer crowd. But that Tennessee pressure now starting to come back into play for um, Vanderbilt. Well, it's been an impactful week, and it will continue. Some great matchups on our ESPN family networks. Tobacco Road doubleheader, North Carolina will be on ABC. The Duke will be on ESPN. A couple of great Big 12 showdowns. Of course, you can start your Saturday with college game day on the road from Gainesville at 11 a.m. Eastern time, and we'll cap it off with Kentucky and Florida. Florida coming off a loss, as are the Cats, so they're both going to be hungry in Gatorland coming up on Saturday night. Kansas has a chance on Saturday at Missouri, a bitter rivalry, to start getting a little bit of that it factor I've been talking about that, that I think Tennessee, Memphis, UCLA, and North Carolina has. Kansas has a couple of percentage points in the 10%. They can get another couple of percentage points, I think, with a win at Missouri in a hostile environment come Saturday. Foster over Lofton. Rimmed out of three. Kept alive by McClellan. McClellan needs some help. Nice pass. And all the way in with the left hand is Alex Gordon. A beautiful pass by Ogilvy to fire one from 20 feet away and hit a small guard right on the numbers. He made a tough play look simple. Just over four minutes remaining. 11 points. Tennessee lead. Good look inside. Chisholm again. And that's why they run the offense so high. I talked about it by design because if you do it, your bigs are always a threat to slip it and go to the rim. Ogilvy answers on the other end. He's had a much better second half. But Wayne Chisholm's had an 18-point, 11-rebound game tonight. Locked it around a pick all the way with a teardrop in and out. Follow. Bruce Pearl out of the foul. Here comes a three-on-one for Vandy. Foster. Offensive oh, pass. My. Wow. Kevin Stallings can only smile because the arguments are over. Tough call on the road. 12 was still moving. A good one shaping up inside the barn in Minneapolis. Right now, let's go back to Brad and Jimmy in Knoxville. 
All right, Dave, stay warm up there. Down here, Thompson Bowling Arena, 68-57, and it's been a Wayne Chisholm night. What a great game he has had. Brad, as good as he is, he still has a lot of potential. He can get those traffic rebounds. That's done a very good job of defending Ogilvy, although Ogilvy is taller. When he stepped out and hit the trail three, the Chisholm trail three, that ignited the building. But this is a guy that has played a lot of minutes in the second half with three fouls. So he has matured from a freshman to a sophomore, understanding the value of him being on the floor, especially without Duke Cruz tonight, playing with foul problems. A season high for him, and just one shy of a career high if he scores any more in the final 336. Right now he's just trying to stay warm on the sideline. Now Vanderbilt has to extend their pressure because time and score dictate what you do defensively on the road. And this is not what Vanderbilt is always comfortable with. And that's that's not cut Tyler Smith and what a great team. You can almost see it coming because that's not what Vanderbilt does defensively, Brad. Boy, what a look by Lamar Smith to Tyler Smith. Oh, some Childress and Ogilvy get tangled up. Great anticipation of Bruce Pearl to know that Vanderbilt's going to come out of their normal comfort zone defensively and start to overplay and pressure all positions. Bring your offense high, throw it to the rim. Great job by Bruce Pearl to anticipate what Vanderbilt was going to do defensively out of the timeout. Childress goes out and Chisholm comes back in. Ogilvy at the free throw line. He's had a much better second half. 11 points on the night to go with five rebounds. Still well off his average. And if Chisholm wouldn't have had that rebound stolen from him by Jawan Smith, that would have matched a career high on the glass, too. Always nice your teammates take away your yeah, career high. Yep. And Tennessee has a take the time off the clock offense. This would be it. Spread the floor. Let your primary ball handlers close this thing out. Blake's going to come back in, and Gordon goes out. All three Smiths on the floor with Chisholm and Lofton. Ooh, that was a quick foul. Not over there. So 2.48 remaining for Tennessee before they go to 15-1. and one. They're on a nine-game winning streak. They haven't had a 10-game winning streak in 10 years. Second straight year, though, they've won nine in a row. And it's a good foul by Ogilvy because you put a 44% free throw shooter at the stripe. Not enough time left for Vanderbilt now to just to play out defensively straight up. And it pays off. Look at this. Chisholm missed both. He does have a career high in rebounds. They've just adjusted some of the stats. And he's got another one. I think that's 14 on the night. And the lob underneath is not going to be a point guard. We know that. <laughs> Bruce Pearl is saying, wait a minute, guys. Let's 236 and let's go to the locker room. Then we'll be 15 and 1. <laughs> and Chisholm's out here laughing in front of us. He thought that was a pretty good break. Just not a very good pass. That, that's part of the swagger <laughs> and the looseness and the confidence that Bruce Pearl allows his kids to play with. Not every coach in the country no. could coach through a mistake like that. Uh, he'll, uh, he'll hammer him behind closed doors, but that's also what makes him awfully good. Foster on the baseline. That's what makes him awfully good. You're right. Foster with 14, kind of a quiet 14, and cuts the lead down to 11. Still 225 remaining. Well, the question becomes now for Tennessee, I think, Jimmy, and you touched on it earlier. Just how good are they? I mean, we knew Vandy was going to have trouble coming in here, and I think Tennessee will have trouble when they go to Vandy on February 26th. And that will be a monster match that you and I will be at on a Tuesday night prime time. But I, I think Tennessee, they're, they're deserving of their number seven ranking with the wins they've had over West Virginia and at Xavier and at Gonzaga, their style of play, their firepower offensively, everything equates to a top ten team. Now, come March, you'll find out, does that equate to a Final Four run? Right. I think it could if Duke Cruz gets back and this club continues to really defend hard. We talk a lot about their offense. 
defensively now, look at the clamps they put on a high-powered offense tonight from Vanderbilt. I thought they'd miss a guy like Bradshaw, who was always the garbage guy last right. year. But if they get Duke Cruz back, as Andy was talking about, in maybe a matter of days, their depth just went up big time. Yep. That's going to help them down the road. And Tyler Smith is kind of their new Dane Bradshaw yeah, this is. year. But, uh, this is a Vanderbilt squad that has shown me a lot of courage and a lot of toughness. 18 points down on a rivalry's floor and the building erupting and they are still in this ball game. And they almost got a layup off a turnover. As it is, they get a foul. Well, the state of Tennessee, we talked about it. Sounds good to me. If you look at the license plates of Memphis, Tennessee, or Vanderbilt, it's all looking pretty good. And then you put the Tennessee Lady Vols in there. Not bad. Just a couple losses is all. Sounds good to me is the state slogan. Yes, I guess so. You know, I thought it coming. was the home of Dolly Parton. <laughs> that's that's what I thought it was. Yeah. I said something similar to that yeah. anyway about Dolly. Look at Vanderbilt now. They now, now. Now, will they come and extend their press? Because that's not their M.O. If they're, if they're not going to extend their press, foul. Yeah, just go ahead and foul them again, the 44% free throw shooter. And Neltner did. So we'll walk it the other way. Don't forget the Hoosiers and the Gophers. Follow us from the barn in Minneapolis. Wayne Chisholm, career high night on the boards. Can he make it a career high night in points? It's all up to you, Wayne. I know you're a 44% free throw shooter, but come on, son. Knock them down. <laughs> you know, and this is a question mark for Tennessee, kind of like where Memphis has a question mark right now with Dozier and Dorsey and their bigs all below 50% from the free throw strike the last time I checked. And it's hard to close out a game now when you get to that three or four point game on the biggest of stages when your bigs can't make free throws and that's why Vanderbilt is still in this ball game. And he came in to try to get his own miss and he actually keeps the ball in his teammates' hands with his hustle after two missed free throws. Tennessee is a team, 67% from the floor. Vanderbilt's way up there at 74% and they go to the line more than any other team in the SEC. Tonight, maybe not necessarily, but normally they do. The killer for Vanderbilt to allow them to get the ball back after a miss. He knew the miss was coming. Drake with a steal. A rejection underneath by Smith. And this time on a tie-up, it's going to be Vanderbilt's ball. Ogilvy, because of the dead ball, now checks back in. And you want to have him foul and Chisholm on the defensive end, but now he's back in offensively. But still, right here is your shot maker, Foster. He's a guy that can catch and fire, especially over a smaller defender. Got Ramar Smith on him. There's the matchup. Well, there's your catch. Now will he fire? There it goes. He's missed three straight from out there. Chisholm with another rebound. And you should have fouled Chisholm when he got the rebound, Brad. They let him get out of it. Lofton with a left hand. Lofton with 11. And the lead goes back to 13. And now knocked away from behind by Tyler Smith. Long lead pass. And another bucket on the other end by Jawan Smith. And Tennessee now the route is on. With a minute and a half to go. Ogilvy goes down hard. Vanderbilt had one final chance when Chisholm got that rebound about 40 seconds ago. They let him pass it out. They should have fouled him because you would have sent him right back down. A kid that's missed four in a row. Kevin Stallings knew it. And from that point on, the game was over. Ogilvy already a three-time SEC freshman of the week with his numbers tonight a much better second half and as Jimmy said maybe a little bit of a fire lit under him at halftime Shane Foster might be done for the Knights if so he leaves with 14 points a tough start to conference play for Vanderbilt a team that was picked fourth but then they have shown that they are one of the elite teams even on the national level. 
Right now, Ole Miss is the surprise team of the conference. Timeout taken by Bruce Pearl. In a 14-point game, 74-60. You mentioned Ole Miss. They're the surprise team in the conference, one of the surprise teams in the country because of the point guard play of Chris Warren. And he has never been mentioned in that same line with the great guards in that freshman class, right. the, the, the Mayos and the Gordons and the Jared Bayless in that line. But you watch Chris Warren play. He was one of those kind of kids at Ole Miss. And during the AAU circuit in the summer, when all the big studs were playing in the main gym, Chris Warren was playing over maybe in the consolation bracket of the smaller high school gym. That little dude can flat out play, and he brings an attitude to that Ole Miss squad. Ole Miss is not going to go away in this SEC race this year. Checking with Andy. Jimmy, at the end of that game, as you know, there were some uh, questionable calls, according to Andy Kennedy of Ole Miss, lodged a protest. Last Friday, he thought there should have been a foul call, and Dwayne Curtis would have put a better free throw shooter at the line instead of Ken Williams. And I asked Bruce Pearl before the game, did he agree? He said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> As only Bruce would do, right? <laughs> well, when Ole Miss came in here, the building was alive that night as well and had four or five chances in the last 30 seconds to take the lead, and then Tyler Smith uh, stuck one up the nose, as Bruce Pearl put it, <laughs> against Ole Miss. That told me that Ole Miss was for real. I knew they were anyways, knocking off Clemson. What a job Andy Kennedy has done. Lamar Smith goes to the free throw line, sophomore. Five points in the ball game. He's a member of the all-freshman team of the SEC last year. In league games, he was actually the number two scorer and number one assist guy as far as freshmen went a year ago. And he's got six assists to go with his six points tonight. Ted Valentine having a word with Andre Walker. I don't know if there's a little shoving going on. I didn't see. There was. 16-point lead. It's been as high as 20 at times here in the second half for Tennessee. Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt did not come over here for a moral victory. But they were also on the verge of losing by 30. They showed a lot of courage to come back. But the score is going to end up 18 whatever. And Vanderbilt showed some fight. Still fighting is Meltner with a hard foul. And that'll send Jawan Smith back to the free throw line. Well, this one's just hit a dead spot now. The game's over. Tennessee leads by 16 with less than a minute to go. Don't forget Indiana, Minnesota next. Man, my first time to see Tennessee in, in person this year. Watched them a couple of times. I knew their win at Xavier was awfully impressive. Their win at uh, Gonzaga for Tennessee was awfully impressive. But they have a lot of pieces. They can really score. They're a team that can get in the march and average 80 points a game, which is exactly what Florida has done the last two years in the NCAA tournament, all the way to the Final Four and the National Championship. You have to be able to score. Florida has averaged over 80 points a game in all 12 NCAA games the last two years. You can tell by watching this one, it doesn't matter for Tennessee who scores night in and night out, right? In this instance, it's not Chris Lofton. And he's only averaging 13 and a half a game. But they don't need 21 or 22 from Lawford every night because they got too many weapons. Yep. That's why North Carolina and Kansas and UCLA, those are the teams right now in Memphis that I have my eye on because they can have that offensive firepower. They can get better defensively, but you sometimes can't get better offensively. You either have weapons or you don't. I look at teams right now that have weapons offensively that can also improve defensively over the next six or seven weeks. Tennessee's one of them. But Graham with a foul, and Jawan Smith back to the free throw line. There he's hit five out of six. He's shooting 85% from the stripe. One of the excellent free throw shooters on this Tennessee team, along with Lofton. Howell's a good one. And now some of the Tennessee guys, including the coach's son, getting some time. Stephen Pearl checks in. Chisholm goes out, 18 points, 18 rebounds. Not a bad night. Career high in rebounds, big time. He was a couple free throws away from his scoring best as well. And as Jimmy said, he got three fouls, I think, in about the first right. two and a half minutes 
of the second half, and he goes out with three fouls. And last year, he would not have understood how to play with foul problems, and that's a lot of different areas you improve from your first year to your second year. And Chisholm has become a more consistent rebounder, a more consistent defender, and the guy that understands the value to his team by staying on the floor with foul problems tonight against a physical Vanderbilt squad that really tested him. Lead is 20, which is the biggest of the night. So the game very close at one point here in the second half. As Vanderbilt got it down to eight and had some chances, but they're going to lose, it appears, by 20. And the good, use, the, the good news for you, three games in three nights, <laughs> with your voice about to tinker out, that you're almost done, seconds, partner. Right. <laughs> Hang in there for eight, seven, six, five, four. <laughs> All right, thanks for the help, partner. So, Jimmy and I, we end our Dixie tour in Knoxville in a 20-point game. Tennessee wins at 80 to 60. They go to 15 and 1, 3 and 0 in the SEC, their best guard in 10 years. Up next on ESPN, more college hoops, Indiana and Minnesota. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Andy Katz, Jimmy Dykes, Brad Nessler saying so long.